Hello, everyone. <laughs> Flying an Encore today. Uh, I'm going to show a few more details about the pressurization system that I did not record in my video from a couple of years ago, uh, showing the pressurization system in action. Um, what I wanted to go over here today is the uh, pressurization source selector and uh, what you'll what you'll uh, actually experience if you start selecting those various select uh, positions on the select. So the the uh, simplest selections you can make are selecting the left hand or the right hand source. And uh, if we were to select those different sources, what we really do is closing the normal flow control valve on the opposite side. So for example, if I select the uh, right hand source, uh, what we're really doing is closing the uh, left hand normal flow control valve and allowing only the right side to provide bleed air to the aircraft. Um, so in that moment, uh, we're basically losing half of our bleed air, and then the outflow valves will uh, adjust themselves accordingly to keep up with the new um, amount of bleed air coming in and, and equalize pressure in the cabin. So uh, we've, uh, we've started a descent here from our cruise altitude, and that's why you see a, a, about a negative 200 foot per minute on the cabin. So we'll kind of use that as our baseline and uh, when I click over to the right-hand source, notice that for just a moment here, it actually shows the cabin rising a little bit because we've lost some bleed air. And then as the outflow valves adjust, the, uh, the rate of descent on the cabin stabilizes back to where it was before. Being that we're in an Encore, uh, the engines provide plenty of bleed air in the Encore um, with the uh, the larger uh, Pratt Whitney 535 engines. If you're flying the older 500 series, the JT15Ds, uh, those have a little bit less bleed air. So at max differential, sometimes depending on how the aircraft's been maintained and what power settings you have and things like that, uh, you might not get enough bleed air out of a single engine to maintain uh, a large differential um, on a single engine. Because again, this system, it, you know, it's all pneumatic valves and, and hoses and things like that. and uh, over the years, they can get gunked up with uh, dust and debris and uh, slight little kinks and things like that. So um, it might not be providing optimal uh, bleed air airflow. So it's okay. The next uh, item I'm going to show you here is actually the Emer pressurization source. So if you remember, the Emer pressurization source is using unfiltered uh, air coming from the left-hand engine. So it's it's closing both normal flow control valves, and uh, it's just basically ducting raw bleed air in from the left engine, completely bypassing the air cycle machine. So if there's a problem with the air cycle machine, um, it just takes that out of the loop entirely, and that's how you get your EMER pressurization. Um, so when we turn this on, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be hard or uh, impossible to hear it because of the way the audio setup is on this camera. but. Uh, it gets a bit louder and it gets warmer uh, because uh, there's no air cycle machine in the loop. And you'll notice that uh, the uh, rate of descent on the cabin changes slightly because uh, it's closing both normal flow control valves and then opening the uh, Emer pressurization valve. And at that point, the power, se the power setting on the left engine determines how much bleed air we get. So if we increase the throttle, we'll get more bleed air, and of course, uh, decrease the throttle, we get less. Right now, we're in a descent with less bleed air, so I'll, I'll uh, turn the Emer pressurization on. And we see that even at a reduced power setting, the cabin momentarily increased its rate of descent. And now, as I play with the throttle a little bit here, I'm gonna just push the throttle forward. You see we get more bleed air pull the power back, we get less bleed air. You see how that's changing the uh, cabin rate of climb or rate of descent? And that's how you would um, uh, manage the airflow using the Emer pressurization source. Of course, uh, once we leave the power at a set setting, the outflow valves can kind of keep up with that. It's just when we momentarily change the power, it takes a few seconds for the outflow valves to uh, react and stabilize the cabin. Okay, now in the Encore, uh, because of the digital pressurization controller, we have a uh, manual and an auto position uh, available for 
um, basically bypassing the digital pressurization controller. Right now it's in auto, so it's using the digital pressurization controller. If I click it up into manual, uh, this will allow us to manually climb and descend the cabin using the uh, cherry picker control right here. Um, if you uh, remember, this cherry picker control is a uh, base, it, it adjusts the um, outflow valves of the cabin uh, based on the differential between the cabin and the outside. So let's say that we want to uh, command a lower cabin altitude. Um, we can select the uh, down position on the cherry picker. Um, and the larger the differential, the faster the cabin reacts. So at a high differential, it'll react really quickly. And at a uh, lower differential, it'll be a little more sluggish. So um, I'll, uh, we see we have kind of a, uh, a relatively high differential. Now I'll just give it a little tap. So we go just a little tap like that. And see how quickly that cabin rate uh, changes. We're at a relatively uh, fast rate of descent in the cabin, about 2,200 feet per minute. And you can see the cabin pressure coming down here. That's just from one little tap. Uh, and then, you know, one little tap back up. Brings it back relatively quickly there. Again, that's because of our uh, relatively high differential. At a low differential, that would be more sluggish in its reaction. So that's how uh, the manual um, system works. Um, I'm physically moving a pneumatic valve by pressing on that uh, cherry picker toggle. And then, of course, when I click it back into the auto setting, uh, the uh, digital pressurization controller takes over again and starts running that uh, um, auto schedule to bring us down to the uh, appropriate cabin altitude by the time we're uh, close to our landing elevation. All right, the last uh, item that I want to show here before signing off on the video is what we see if we actually turn the pressurization system off. Um, if we turn it off, that simply closes the normal flow control valves and it doesn't open anything else up like the Emer valves. Um, and, uh, and what you'll see is that there's really nothing catastrophic instantly about it. It's just that the uh, uh, there's no more air coming into the cabin, and therefore it's going to start moderately leaking out. Um, so in uh, most aircraft, you know, it depends how well the, the airplane has been maintained and sealed up. Uh, most of these 500 series citations, uh, you might see a leak rate of somewhere between uh, 1,000 and 2,000 feet a minute on the cabin rate of uh, climb. And, uh, and um, in an Excel, you might see somewhere a little better, somewhere closer to 800 or 1,000 feet a minute in an Excel. So let's just do that now. We'll select the left-hand uh, source initially. Let it stabilize for a second here. And then I'm going to select off. And with the pressurization system turned off, you see it leaking at about, uh, about 2,000, 2,100 2,200 feet a minute. That's a, that's pretty normal. Uh, so it would leak up to our um, present altitude. You know, it would basically the cabin would climb to our present altitude if we allowed this to uh, remain this way. But uh, we don't want to do that, so we're going to turn the pressurization back to normal. And of course, with uh, both normal flow control valves open, it uh, quickly wants to adjust the cabin back down to uh, where the auto schedule is intending it to be. And everything gets back on track relatively quickly there. All right, that's the pressurization system in action. Um, the only other uh, detail I should maybe mention is that uh, in the older 500 series citations, uh, the, uh, you know, the 5 and the Ultra and uh, aircraft like that, that have a ground valve. The Encore does not have a ground valve, but in those older citations that have the ground valve um, as a pressure source, um, that will close down the normal flow control valves and open a ground valve off the right engine. Um, but that has a safeguard where it doesn't work in flight. So it, if you do that in flight, it's effectively turning the uh, pressurization system off and you would uh, see the reaction accordingly.